One day, a few months before we were told it was time for hospice for my dad, we were all sitting in his condo. It was me, my mom, my boys, and my dad in his wheelchair. He was slowly dying from a disease that none of us had even heard of before. He was trapped inside of a failing body. His brain was deteriorating just enough behind his body that he was aware of his own demise. I don't know how or why I thought of it, but I said to him, do you want to listen to some music? And it was like a light bulb went on behind his eyes. And he said, how? And I literally had not really thought this far into my question. So when he asked how, I said, on my laptop, of course. And he said, okay. I opened up iTunes and I just searched the first song I could think of that he and I loved. It was a song by Bob Dylan. And then I chose one by R.E.M. And at that point, his affect was a little bit blunted, meaning you couldn't really tell emotionally what was always going on for him, but he definitely was like moving his head and whatever I was doing seemed to be working for him. I found one of my dad's favorite folk songs. It's called The Falcon. And what happened next is that my father started to cry. And so I asked him, dad, do you want me to shut it off? And through his tears, he said, no. My love for music came from my father. I have a soundtrack to pretty much every year of my life, thanks to my dad. He always, always, always had music on. He never formally played an instrument. He could tinker on the piano and he actually had a pretty good ear for improvisation. He was an amazing dancer, he had a wonderful sense of rhythm, and he basically knew every music fact from about the 1920s on. And so, in the months before my father died, as my father died, we listened to music together. I played music for him, the songs that were important to him, to me, the songs that were important to us together. We listened to songs that we hadn't thought about in years. We sang together. We remembered songs that when we listened to them on LP, they would have a scratch in them and we would both sing the skip where the scratch was. I would let my mind wander musically and I would find songs that we hadn't thought about in so long that we could sing together. Like squeaky Bob Dylan and like weird funky Eric Clapton songs and soulful John Prine songs that had so many memories wrapped up with them. And those are now, those are the saddest songs I know. And I still sing and play them now. You make me unlonely. I feel like the only person in the world who's ever had a girl like you. All the boys think she's a spy she's got. Betty Davis eyes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> These songs were our songs. They will always be our songs. Sometimes I sang to my father to help him go to sleep. I would stroke his forehead and I would press gently at the crease between his eyes where he held all of his fear about my mother not being okay when he was gone. My father and I shared memories and joy through music in the months before he died. When Bob Dylan's new album came out, I downloaded it and we were so excited to listen to it together. And we started to play and we were sitting there with bated breath and it turned out we didn't like it so much. And my father still had his sense of humor. He literally said, I'm lying here dying and this new Dylan album sucks. You know, sometimes when we care for someone, when they're sick or when they're dying and especially when they have so many physical and, and medical needs, it's so easy to forget that like there's a person in there. Like there's a person with preferences, with, with agency, with, with likes, with dislikes. There's a, there's a person in there. 
my father loved music and his illness tried to take that from him. But we showed everyone, and most of all, we showed each other that there are some things that death cannot take. You know, the, the soul that yearns for music and for fulfillment from music, it never dies. <laughs> Thank you for watching.